what's up? It's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to The Nest. You know I'm always so thrilled to have you here. So today I'm going to help you do something that most artists positively hate, and that is writing an artist statement. I know it sounds awful and horrible and boring, and I used to feel the same way. I've been to a lot of different art schools, and I've had all kinds of teachers make me write artist statements, and I was always like, mm, I don't want to do this. But you know what? I've gotten good at it because I've realized how simple and easy it really is. And I'm going to share my little secrets with you. Well, not really secrets, just my steps with you today. Um, and there's basically, we're going to go over like three kind of main things. Why to write it, like what does it do you any good? Why take the time to write an arm statement? I mean, you've already painted a beautiful painting. Why you got to write about it? What to write? Like some people are just like, I just want to paint something beautiful and that's okay. But you have to be able to kind of like say it better than that and then how to write it and present it because you know there's certain a certain style that you want of course grammar all that kind of stuff so we're gonna go over those it's super easy don't you worry about a thing guys I will have points um, like written on the screen as well as in a blog post linked down below so you're welcome to take a little few notes or you can just sit back chillax and then pop that blog post after you watch the video and I will have like all the major points itemized just for you just because I want you to feel comfortable writing the best artist statement that you can and if you do wind up feeling even this much more confident pretty please think about hitting that subscribe button bam it is wonders for my channel and it makes sure that you come back over and over and over and over again so anyways enjoy oh I'm gonna actually go upstairs it is a beautiful day and I can walk right on top of my little bungalow and so that's where I'm gonna film this so have fun So this is going to be the most important part of writing your artist statement, okay? That's why I'm standing up because I'm kind of a spaz and I want to emphasize this, okay? The most important thing, like people are like, okay, why do I need to write an artist statement? I already have, you know, my paintings, don't they speak for themselves, yada yada. Like yes, your art should speak for itself, but trust me, it's not quite enough if you really want that deep. Number one, why you should do it connection okay you need to connect with your audience and your paintings your artwork definitely does I mean that's why your fans are there reading your artist statement to begin with but once they've seen them they want more they want that deeper connection okay so that is so important because trust me there are so many artists out there so many incredible artists and if you don't make that deep connection you're just one scroll away from just getting lost in the abyss you know what I mean <clears throat> I have actually talked to a few uh, high school classes and um, what I told these kids is the same thing I will tell you. If you're not excited about your artwork, nobody else will be, okay? That is like so important. Like you have to be excited about your work. You have to want to talk about it, show about it, write about it, express yourself with it. You have got to be as excited about your artwork as you possibly can because I can't express this enough. Nobody else is gonna care if you don't. Nobody. If you're blase and you're just like, oh, I make these things and I just put them out there and whatever. Like, that's what everybody else is gonna think. Like, oh, this artist just kind of makes some stuff and throws it out in the world and doesn't really care and it's just there. Okay, whatever. Like, that's not very interesting to me. It's not interesting to me, at least. You know what I mean? Like, your, artist, your, your audience needs to have a deep connection. They need to know why. They need to see your passion. Passion. Be passionate about what you're doing. Don't be fake. I'm a spaz, I'm crazy enthusiastic, don't be, you don't have to be like me, but whatever your level of enthusiasm is, that's what you need to be with your artist statement. I mean, really with your art all the time, but definitely like in your artist statement. Like you need to be, you need to give them a reason to care. Nobody, nobody, nobody will care if you do not, okay? Like it just won't happen. Like it, nobody, nobody will care if you don't. <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> make people care about your art and they will care about your art. <laughs> like I wanna like just flash that everywhere. You know what I mean? So yes, another thing is your audience likes insight. They want to know like what's to know you know what I mean like they they can surmise and guess or whatever but they want to they want to have like again like a way to connect but they want to know what they're connecting with to give them a reason to connect they want insight and makes them feel in the know okay people like having stuff to talk about right like you and I like okay let's say my friend my girlfriend over here my best friend she goes to an art show I wasn't able to go to 
And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, whatever. I'm so jealous. Tell me about this art show you went to. I want to go see it. She's like, oh, it was nice. There were these paintings, there are portraits, they're beautiful, you know, very nicely done. They use a lot of purple and red, and, you know, they were really cool. And I'm like, okay, that sounds, you know, pretty good. You know, maybe, maybe or not, I'll check that out. Now, what if she says, oh my gosh, they were amazing, they were so beautiful, very detailed, gorgeous portraits made with purple and red, you know, a lot of that. However, what's so cool about them is that the, the artist took this long summer trip through Iceland and all these portraits were of people that she met along the way that had insights into what she should do with her life and helping her like come of age or what, you know what I mean? Like imagine if that was the story connected with all of these nice portraits. Then I'm like, oh, you know, even as an outsider hearing it, like it's like a connection, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, I like to travel and she likes to travel and she's trying to discover about herself and I try to, you know, become a better person. I like to do that, you know, like all of a sudden just, you know, it doesn't have to be long. Through a few sentences, there's all these little connections and like, man, like sh these people must be so meaningful. I wonder what they said. Like what, what kind of insights does she have to share with me? You know, it's like it, it just, just a small bit of background information can make a whole new dimension of your artwork. And again, it shows that you are enthusiastic and passionate about what you're doing, that you're not just blah, 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 painting this and that. Let me, let me say, if you're still learning and practicing and in school and still trying to get better and better, then just painting and drawing just for the sake of getting better is perfectly fine. You don't have to have an artist statement for every, you know, palm tree or still life you do. Of course not. But this is when you're making like a co cohesive body of work. When you're trying to be serious about showing your own original artwork, this is when this comes into play, okay? So the audience likes insight. It makes them feel in the know. I mean, not only, of course, for your friend right now, but even a few years down the road, that kind of thing sticks with you. You know what I mean? Like, if I saw some really cool art show three years ago, and then somebody is talking about Iceland, I'll be like, you know, I saw this art show, this lady, she traveled around, it was amazing, the pictures were great. Let me pull her up because, of course, I remember her because I've made this deep connection, having gone to this art show, and now I'm feeling a part of her. Like, once they have that connection with you, then it's like they own a little piece of you, or like they own a little piece, like the art they own is not, it's your art, but it's their art as much as it is yours. You know what I mean? And that's what you want people to feel. When they own one of your originals, hopefully, or a print, nonetheless, no matter what, like you want them to feel like that is a part of them. They identify in a deep place with that because those people, oh, sorry, I'm hitting my mic. Those people are the ones that are gonna collect from you. Those people are the ones that are gonna um, share you with their friends. Those are the ones that are gonna love you forever. They're gonna love your journey. If you change up your style and develop and grow through the years, which many artists do, these are the folks that are gonna stick with you because they're like, you know, she's still that same woman that went to Iceland and that I was so inspired by when I was in my 20s and now I'm in my 40s and even though she's now doing abstracts and is in Cuba, I'm still, she's still a part of me. You know what I mean? So I know, I know I'm kind of ranting on this part, but it's just so important. It's so important. Like, if you actually care about having a dedicated audience, writing about your artwork is 100% clutch key. And let me tell you real quick, real quick, real quick. It takes like probably 20,000 Instagram followers to give you the same kind of like genuine loving as like 200 in real life followers, maybe even more, maybe 50,000 followers. I mean, I'm telling you like people that connect with you and own a, a piece of you or own a part of your story for themselves, that, that's the in real life. That's not just a scroll. That's not just a click. That's an IRL. You know, that's an in real life fan. And those are the ones that are going to buy originals. They're going to buy prints, you know, maybe every year. They're going to commission the thing. They're going to follow your journey. They're going to support you, you know, like, so trust me. That, that's what you want, the in real life connections. Okay, yes. All right, yes. All right. Rant is over. Um, one more thing, one more reason why is because your message is not always obvious. And this kind of goes back with making sure that they feel in the know, like, like it can be, you know, you can think that your message is very obvious and other people can get totally misconstrued. And, you know, sometimes it's not so bad. Sometimes it's like, oh, they are just portraits of lovely people. Okay, that's not gonna be whatever. But especially if it's like any kind of like commentary art, like socio or political commentary art, like, I mean, what if you're like, you know, 
paintings make people think that you're with the anti-eggplant people, you know, the, the folks who want all eggplants to burn and rot in hell. And you're like, no, I love eggplants, I want to save them, I'm pro-eggplant. Like, what, what are people going to think that they see your artwork and they're like, hmm, is this person pro or against eggplants? You really want them to know because that could be important. That could be the difference between an eaten eggplant and a wasted eggplant. So. Anyways, connect with your audience. Let them know why you're doing it. And the thing is, is that's kind of fun. It's kind of like, hey guys, who would like a little unsolicited opinion? Come step right up. So anyways, yes, okay. That's the most important. Next we're gonna get into the how. Yay. <laughs> no, what, whoops, what is next? How is last? <laughs> Okay, so we have talked about why to write about your art, passion, and now we're gonna talk about what to write about your art. Now this sometimes can be like the most daunting part, I feel like. I feel like getting inspired can be kind of easy, but um, actually figuring out specifics can be difficult, but it's not, it's not, it's not hard, trust me, it's just not. So um, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna read these five questions that I came up with to kind of keep in mind. Now, um, like I said, all of these questions, like everything, bullet points, all this stuff is gonna be on my blog. So just check the links down below after this video. You'll have all this written down, all these blog points. You don't need to take notes. So this is what I want you to reflect on, kind of have in the back of your mind while we talk about what to write. Okay, ready? So. Are there any unusual processes or materials, especially if the medium is a direct correlation to the voice of your work, okay? Is there a reason why you're using charcoal versus pencil? If it's just that you like the medium, then you don't necessarily put, need to put it in. But if it's like, oh, I have a commentary on the coal mining industry of the United States and I'm using charcoal for that reason, yeah, that's kind of important. You might want to put that in, right? Okay, so. Any unusual processes or materials, anything that correlates, you know, that's important. You know, I'm an oil painter. Um, unless I'm using mixed media, I don't tend to really write much about my oil painting process because it's, everybody knows, you know? Okay. Uh, what exactly is the subject and what does it mean to you? Pretty self-explanatory. That's kind of the, the passionate part. What you painting and why? We'll go into that. How does the subject affect you and or hopefully and how would you like it to affect the viewer now this is very important this again is that connection you know what i mean this tells people why you care what what is like why did you paint this to represent that right okay what in your personal life or history made you gravitate towards this subject now this is one of those things that's like you don't you know, maybe this matters, maybe this doesn't. These are just kind of some points to get you started. And then, is there anything you hope to accomplish by sharing this body of work or this specific work with the world? Like, is there some kind of social change you wish to make play, like make happen? Is it just because you think there needs to be more beauty? Or like, from my works, like, I feel like the galleries need to be ever more representational of all kinds of different people in the world, not just, beautiful, gorgeous women all day long, usually of very little ethnic diversity. Things are getting better now, but anyways. Um, <clears throat> so those are the kind of the five questions that are like my sort of, my questions that I came up with. I read that straight off my blog post, so don't you worry, you got it down below, you'll find that. So keep these in mind, okay, right? So this is gonna be how to do that, how to answer those questions. So a good way, got my little notes here so I don't forget a thing, um, brainstorm, jot stuff down, make a mood board. Um, I definitely recommend having a little at-home art show um, where you kind of set up a bunch of your works in your you know, living room or bedroom or whatever, someplace where you can line them up all against the wall. It doesn't have to be anything, nothing, nothing hung on the walls or anything like that. Just boop, 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 all the way around just so that you can see, you know, like five to ten of your works all together because that's going to really help you when writing the artist statement because trust me, like, 
especially if you've got a nice, you know, good body of work, you'll forget little things or little details or like why you made that bird blue instead of red or why you did them facing this direction instead of that, da, da, da. Like you don't think about that, but when the work is in front of you, it's, trust me, you'll look at it and be like, oh, that's right, that's what that meant or that's why I added that or blah, blah, blah. So, so anyways, yeah, I highly recommend while you're brainstorming and even while you're writing it, if you can, if it doesn't take up too much space, Set your little artworks up, have them there to look at while you're writing. Um, mood borders, I'm really not much of a mood border, but I know some people find so much creativity. And so if you have a certain feeling or emotion that you want to get across, you know, I mean, obviously your, you know, works of art are kind of a three dimensional mood board of themselves, but it, you know, so, sometimes it really helps. I don't know. I think it's not a bad idea if that's what you're into. And then, you know, just brainstorming, jotting ideas, like I said at first, but, but, but just list, bullet point. Don't try to be fancy, just, you know, this makes you think of this, this makes you think of that. Like, I even sometimes do like dictation, honestly. Like I have, I actually just got dictation on my computer. Ooh, I'll link to that down below too. It's a free app and literally, like sometimes when I'm writing blog posts and stuff, I'll just sit there and just kind of stare off into space and just talk into my computer and then later on I'll go in and organize it and you know edit whatever and blah 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 but that's actually a really good way to brainstorm so yes like just on your phone or on your computer. Um, now, then once you've kind of made a big you know cast a big net as we say you have a lot of a lot of stars in your big net and you're like oh there's all these shiny things like what do I want to you know, what do I want to edit? What's the most important parts to me? Um, then you're gonna wanna pick, sorry, I'm kinda like, whew, there's something in the air. Um, then you're gonna wanna pick kind of two to four of the most important points that you wanna make because, like I said before, um, brevity, being concise, being short, like you do not, this is not English 101 essay. This is short, sweet, grab somebody, make them interested, and then they're gonna, you know, move on to look at more of your artwork, hopefully. So don't sit here and think you need to write a long thing. Pick two to four, you know, really three, whatever, good points that you think are the most important thing that you really want your viewer to take away, okay? Um, and then just kind of write about each of those. Like, at first you did a little bullet points or mood boarding or whatever, now, take each of those subjects and kind of expound on those maybe a little bit. Again, not much. If you take like, you know, whatever, say one of your most important topics is that you use the color blue and you, um, all of your paintings are square and they all have to do with like Venice in the summer. Okay, so now have a Venice in the summer, paintings in blue, everything on square, and then maybe write two points or maybe three points or descriptors or something about each of those. Not much. Again, you don't want long things. Just a little da da da. Not English 101, trust me. Um, and that's going to really help you just kind of get started and just kind of get those juices flowing. You know what I mean? So we're into how to write it and that begins a whole new set of how, what, and why, because those are the questions that you need to make sure are answered. So how, like we talked about, are there any processes or materials or anything that are specific to this body of work that are worth mentioning? If nothing else, you need to just say at least they're oil paintings. You know what I mean? If, if, even if you don't say anything else, you have to have like at least one little thing, pencil drawings, whatever. But if it means something, then you wanna know how, um, you know, there's a difference if I'm doing paintings that fit, you know, on the back of a greeting card size or whatever, and there's a difference if I'm doing a painting that, you know, is a mural. <laughs> so, little little insight right there. Um, what? Again, like, what are you doing? What is your subject matter? This goes back to those questions again that I read to you. Um, we'll see down below. Um, like, what is it? What is your subject? What? And then why? And this, this again is sort of like your passion. Like why, why did you do this? Why do you care? Why, why should I as the viewer care about your work? Why, why should I take this to be my IRL, my in real life? Why should I, you know, be passionate about your work? So that is a huge one. So the how, what, and why of this video 
all comes down to a how, what, and why of your artist statement, okay? So you wanna connect those things, make it easy. Those are the three questions. If, if you've got those three answered, you're doing pretty good. You're doing better than most, okay? Now, I'm gonna start with the scary part, the intro, bah. Intros are scary. The very first sentence, it's kind of scary. Honestly, I usually write that last or close to last um, because the intro is sort of like a, like a sneak peek of like what they're gonna get. You know what I mean? Like a one sentence sort of sneak peek hook. You want a hook and you always hear people talking about writing a hook and a hook just means basically if people aren't interested by sentence one, they ain't reading sentences to, sentence two. They're definitely not going to three, four, are you kidding me? There's a second paragraph, goodbye. Right? So you gotta have a hook. You have to have a reason in the very first sentence why people want to keep reading, okay? Um, this is not BuzzFeed clickbait time. This is, you know, like, instead of, I like to paint oil paintings of beautiful people, it's, you know, on an exciting summer, realizing my self-worth in this world, I met a series of people that helped connect me with the deeper part of my soul that I knew I wanted to grow into, and I was compelled to come home and create these oil paintings from these photographs that I took. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of better than like, hi, my name is Kaylee, and I like to do oil paintings of pretty people. That's like, oh, okay, that's nice for you. I mean, so that first sentence can really, that's kind of a make it or break it, okay? But like I said, that's the scariest part. That's the hardest part, and I say save it to the very end because once you've got all your thoughts out, then it becomes way easier because then you're like, oh, I'm basically just given a little teaser of all the exciting things because I'm enthusiastic about my artwork that I'm about to tell them anyways, right? It's easy, y'all. It's easy, y'all. It's easy, it's easy, okay. so. That's the hard part, all right? Now this stuff is just details. Um, this should be no more than 400 words. And a lot of places you'll see people say 200 words and I personally have two artist statements. Now I know that sounds like yikes, but some places like longer, some places like shorter. If you can write one that's around three to 400 words, which is like three paragraphs, four paragraphs is not much three paragraphs, then you can abbreviate it and make it even shorter. I personally do that because some places, they want like 150 or 200 words. Other places, they want a little longer. And on my website, I want it a little longer. I want to engage my audience. I want to have that deeper connection. Deep connection is what you want because uh, you're, like, they just nobody will care if you don't give them a reason. I cannot express that enough. Okay, so. Um, no more than about 400 words. Make an abbreviated version. Um, that's just, just, just good advice. I'm sorry it is. And uh, keep those paragraphs short on both versions. Paragraphs should be short. You know, when you're looking at like a page, like nobody reads a thing that looks like this. Just nobody does. You know, they're like, yikes. It doesn't matter if they're like the most interested person in the world. Like, it's hard. I am someone I love when I go to like um, museums and galleries and stuff, I am, I am getting the docent tours, I have got the little ear thingies, I am reading the signs, like I really, I really like to learn about what I'm there. And even me, who loves that kind of thing, I love it. If I go and I see a thing up on the wall that is one solid paragraph, but boom, I'm like, whoa, jeepers, I didn't bring any friggin' popcorn to this show, so I'm telling you. Keep those paragraphs short, especially if you're like emailing this, good heavens, nobody reads a long paragraph in the email. Them, them little things need to be like this. So, you know, five or six sentences. The tone should be simple and conversational. You're talking to a viewer, you're not talking to like an art historian, hardcore art critic, although hopefully um, you will, one day soon, yes, be able to show in a gallery where there are some high-end art critics and they will love your work and they will love that they understand your artist statement. You know, they might try to talk in a more aloof way, but you don't need to. You need this to be like if you're talking to one of your friends that's, you know, intelligent but not like super whiz kid genius, you know? You want to use first person present tense, like a conversation. I'm telling you about my artwork. I'm telling you about what's going on. I'm telling you about what's important. 
not some high lofty third person past tense like they think are you are you speaking for a deceased artist no I'm talking about myself today okay and that goes into you're talking about yourself, your artist statement, what it means, but this is not a bio. Do not mistake this. Your artist statement should not have, even though I said like way earlier about like did any of your history or experiences influence this. Okay, yes, if you went to art school in France and the people of the countryside influenced your body of work, okay, that's one thing. But if you went to art school in France and you're painting, you know, street scenes in New York City, like who cares? Like that's not, this is not a time or place for that. There should be, usually on your website especially, there should be an artist statement and then a, a bio, about equally length, you know, three three paragraphs or so, 300 words, something like that. Um, yes, yes, I love you, I love you, Breeze. Um, so yeah, this is not a bio. Don't mistake it for a bio. Do not sit there and go into yourself a whole bunch. Only as you relate to this specific body of work should you talk about yourself. And then, like I was saying, as far as like this should be conversational, gallery worthy, but not like frou-frou. It doesn't need to be fluffy, flowery. It doesn't need to, you know, you don't need to ruminate on every, you know, if you feel the need to read your artist statement like this, then you're, you're doing it wrong, okay? No, nobody, we're not in ancient Greece. You're not inventing the toga, you know, relief carvings, okay? <laughs> That's not what's happening here. Um, I like to say be brave and bold with your adjectives, but not too fluffy or flowery, okay? And what that basically means is like, don't be like, I painted this leaf because it's pretty and I like the color green. Wow, okay, snooze fest. Okay, I felt compelled to paint the integral geometric forms with their organic waves in this amazing green mixed with the yellow that matches, that makes me think of the tropics. Oh no, flower. You know what I mean? Like that's so different. Like it doesn't, it, it's, it's expressive and it's unique. Hey, I think I said this in another video. I'm gonna say this again. The thesaurus is your friend. My best friend is the thesaurus. So if you don't have thesaurus.com saved to your flipping bookmarks bar, like do that do that because the thesaurus oh my god just what do you think about your work okay I may I do pretty things just type in the word pretty and use like anything else except for the word pretty okay right yes brave and bold but not flowery and annoying I feel like what I just said about my beautiful leaf painting was not flowery or annoying it was just kind of like oh wow she really loves these lines I mean honestly like this would be beautiful to paint, wouldn't it? Look at these lines, look at how they flow, look how they're geometric, they're symmetrical, but yet they have this lovely little twist and curl. They even have the little like brown highlights at the end, like think about how beautifully you could describe something as simple as a leaf, or you could be like, I like the color green, you know? And now that we've got this beautiful, intelligent, but not too, not too sophisticated, not too, nothing stupid, but not, you know, now we've got it nice and written. Oh my goodness, holy crap, holy grammar and spelling. If you are not good, even moderate at these things, please, please get help, please. And I don't mean that in a mean way, and I don't mean that like in a general sense, please get help with this assignment because you can't like as someone who you know not to toot my own horn but i'm pretty pretty grammatically proficient i'm quite a, you know again pretty good speller like i i cannot tell you it is so hard to hear the voice of anything behind a poorly written document it's like jarring it's so jarring like i don't care i don't care if you are Michelangelo describing the process of the Sistine Chapel. If you cannot use the correct tense throughout your three paragraphs, if you cannot figure out when to capitalize and where to put a period, like, I, I don't care. I don't care if you're Michelangelo <laughs> describing the Sistine Chapel. And I have seen that in person and I cried the first time, okay? I saw it the second time, then cried. But the first time, I freaking cried when I saw it. And I'm still not caring if you cannot capitalize the word I. <laughs> 
Yes, okay. You, I'm a spaz, okay? If you've watched this far, you, you must be okay with that, okay. <clears throat> now that we have corrected our grammar, psh, as best as possible, getting a friend, mom, relative, teacher, anyone, maybe more than one, anyone to help you with the grammar. Now, once you've done all that and put in all this work, Put it away for one week. Don't read, don't peek, trust me. Think about it, let your little brainstorming session should totally continue, but you should not be like reading it at all. Then you're gonna pull it out. You're gonna see it with fresh eyes, fresh brain. You'll be surprised, like you'll be like, whoa, I didn't make this point clear at all, or oh, this was weird, or like, oh wow, this sounded really good. I forgot how great this was, you know what I mean? So pull it back out after about a week, make some tweaks again, another draft, right? Um, some more uh, grammar help if you need it, you know. And then, last but not least, have at least, at least three other people that you trust, that you trust their opinions, that you think that they are, you know, whatever, good people to know and to have in your life. Have at least three of them read your work and give you an honest critique. Now this can be hard, it can be hard to get a critique, okay, but trust me, these these people love you and they're trying to help. And the important thing is, is to get at least three. Like if you have five or 10 people you wanna show it to, that's amazing. But if you get only one, I mean, we're all different and we all experience life differently and have different opinions and have gone to different schools and all that kind of stuff. So like, you don't just wanna rely on one person just the same way that you're getting these critiques that you're not just relying on yourself. So if you go and ask three people and two of them say, this sounds funny and one of them's like, no, no, it's fine. Then maybe you wanna to listen to the two, the two out of three and say, oh, maybe I need to re rework those words or whatever, okay? So get at least three people to have a little looksy looksy, and then at the very end, you're good to go. You got it. You've got your, your final draft. One more grammar check is always good. And basically, that's it. That's how you write an artist statement. It is not that hard. It's not gonna take you that long. Just do little bits, space it out, you're gonna be great.